Okay. Now, Lee King, the last time I talked to you in uh, Altoona several months ago, uh, I think we had considered all the uh, possible threats to the Pirates, including St. Louis, and uh, you had mentioned that you thought the Cubs could be tough this year. I think the only one we really didn't talk about was uh, the team that has been, uh, that's right behind them now, the Philadelphia Phillies. What happened that we neglected them? Mm, I don't know. I think I did uh, talk about them, if memory serves me right. I thought they'd be a contending ball club this year again because uh, they had made uh, the trades that they wanted to do. They, they picked up Tug McGraw and they were looking for some help in the bullpen and I thought that was uh, a big plus for them. I thought they'd be a contending ball club. I think, in fact, they've strengthened themselves, I think, uh, since the season started, they picked up a good center fielder and Gary Maddox, and I think they believe they can win again. So that's that's a big plus for them. Pirates have basically the same team now as a year ago. Yet a year ago, we were in fourth place. Now we're leading the National League East by some four and a half games. Besides winning, what else has happened? Well, I think uh, I think just the idea that they wanted to get off to a good start this year. They they came off of a bad season in 73. It was a frustrating thing, losing Clemente and the loss of Blass. And it was kind of a lost ball club, and they started off so poorly last year, and they got their stuff together. It's a good ball club, and I think they just decided, they were determined they weren't going to get off to a bad start in 1975. And it was one of the most obvious things I saw in Florida. Everybody talked about it. They worked towards it. And I think that's the big difference is the attitude that they've had this year and last year's poor start turned out to be a blessing because I think it woke them up to the fact that, you know, they've got to go out and do it on the field. They can't talk about it. Danny Mertel all the time seems to be, um, let's say, groping in his search for a regular starting rotation. Seems there's six or seven that are in there at times. Do you think he has uh, settled on uh, on a starting four or five or is a... Uh, what is I, don't, I don't think there's any uh, loss of confidence in anybody. The only reason he hasn't gone with it is uh, strictly because of injuries. Brett's been hurt, and the guy's hurt. You have to find somebody to take his spot. And the other one was Doc Ellis was hurt for a while, and he had to find somebody else to take his spot. And I don't think it's a groping situation. It's just out of necessity. And the recent one was strictly because of double headers. You have to find somebody that'll pitch that odd ball game, but. Royce and Keeson have gone every time. They haven't missed any starts at all, and they've been healthy. And other than that, Jim Rooker is the same way. He's been going every five days. So really, it's just been the case of a couple of injuries from the standpoint of uh, Brett's been hurt for a while and Doc Ellis. But those are going to be your five starters, I would guess, when they're healthy. You've got Candelaria and Demery who can pitch both the long relief, short relief, and they can start and do very well, as they have proven. So I think that pitching depth is right there and uh, I don't know maybe I could agree with your choice of words there groping I don't think uh, Danny would be groping for starting pitching I think it's just out of necessity he had he had to look for somebody additionally yeah. seems a bit ironic that the Pirates who have, who have been playing strong baseball for the last well several weeks now and have uh, had a pretty good lead in the National League East for several weeks now, will not be represented on the starting lineup in the National League East, and indeed have, uh, well, with Jerry Royce and uh, probably with a few others playing, but yet we don't have anybody starting in that Good National League. Well, National that's the way it goes. I think with the, you know, fans pick the players, and if you've got the players, way, uh, if you get the votes, if fans want to vote for them, they're the ones that play, and there's not a whole lot you can do about it. Those are the ground rules, and if... If people want to vote for them, I guess they're going to vote for them. If they don't, well, you just have to take your chances. Walter Austin said it uh, truthfully. He said, if you're in a big town, the metropolitan market, uh, there are more people are going to vote for their hometown ball players, and that's exactly what's happening. And that's the only way you can do it, I guess, if you're going to get fan uh, participation in the thing. It has some blessings, and it has some uh, not-so-pleasant aspects of it, too. But I, I think it, it creates interest, and other than that, it really isn't that important. The All-Star game, I think, is for fans appreciation more than it is for the players. They like being there. I'm not arguing that. Everybody thinks they had a good year. It's, uh, it's nice to be considered one of the top players in the league. And I'm sure that Walter Austin will take into consideration guys like Dave Parker. I would guess that maybe when he starts Al Oliver, I don't know. Guys like that certainly deserve. Richie Hebner's had a good first half of the year, too. So I think there'll be some pirates there other than just uh, the fact that Jerry Royce is there. Now, the King will let you get upstairs and do your thing. Thanks for your comments. Okay, thank you.